trees here are very dense, but in the center of these trees, there's about a 50, maybe 60 foot kind of clearing that's uh, dominated by rocks, like small boulders, maybe two or three feet high, covered in, in moss. And you can see around them, um, like, small bits of bone that would suggest that uh, food has been dragged here. Mm. Um, so, how close are we thing, to it? Um, I think you're just like at the edge of the, the clearing, so maybe okay. 60, 70 feet away from it, depending on and how And it is looking directly at us? Um, so... That's what I need to find out if it knows you're there, so hold tight. Um, I'm in. You want me to talk to it before I kill it? Yes, I do want to talk to it before you kill it, uh, if you don't mind. You can talk to it? I can talk to it. Cool. Having cool. said that, having the element of surprise... Uh, probably yeah, but the element of surprise is overrated. <laughs> um, well, but we can beat it into submission. And not if we need to dig a new grave for you. You were, you were leading, weren't you? Um, yes. Robin's scouting, but this very specifically, you were following the tracks. What is your stealth? My stealth, my yeah. stealth is like thirteen. Yeah, like so fifteen maybe. Let, add let to me that, try. add to that. I believe Carson recently used Shatter, which is a very loud spell, and you were in a battle. Yeah, I think. Oh you yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> you can see, it's like Thanks, lying, Carson. it's lying low to the ground, and its head's resting on top of a, a rock, such that its body is concealed, and you can see its tail uh, flapping about, and it's it's staring at you. Um, it definitely knows you, uh, you're at the edge of its domain. As a as a reference I... for, for size, this thing's um, this thing's probably about the same size as um, as a horse. That kind of that kind of size. Oh, same size okay. as a horse or bigger? Do you say? Um, quickly, so, I want to like hold back the group, and I want to say in draconic beast. What do you want from us? What do you want from here? Okay. So much for the surprise. He was looking, so looking at you, us. You call out in Draconic. Um, can you give me a persuasion test with advantage? Yeah, so... I think you see the, oh, the the lizard like perk up, like it understood you, and then stare very intently at you across the the rocky ground. Its its haunches like move as sinuous muscle shifts beneath the heavy scales, and its eyes just bore into you. If that is how Over, it is, there's, then there's there's no doubt you've you've encountered these beings before. It speaks it speaks draconic. It's not a simple beast. It understands you, but you're not entirely sure what it is. I have no idea. I've, I've only you seen one dragon. You? He didn't answer, it just stared at me. Well, look, look, Go beast. and beat the answers out of him. And no, 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 I start walking. I start, I'm sorry. Robin nods and goes, oi, less of this. <sighs> the spiders were just a warm up for Ash and he's walking straight ahead. You know what, fuck it. As he passes by, I pat him on the back and I cast Longstrider. Okay. Whee, nice. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it, little thing. Okay. And you can see my tiny dwarven legs. So are you just like? Nimbly. Are you just like strutting up to it? Are you pulling out your axe? Are you preparing? Yeah, yeah to I'm charge? getting my axe out, and I leisurely with my long strider nimble hop. And oh, then, I hide behind the tree immediately. Uh, yeah, and then uh, as soon as I'm in a reasonable distance, I just charge with a loud scream. <laughs> okay, so uh, give me a strength saving throw. Okay. Ooh! So, what happens is, Asham, you begin like walking up, and you very quickly find yourself moving quicker than you had expected. Oboe's magic has strengthened your legs, and you cover the ground with ease. And as you get within that fatal charge range, you lift up your axe. What do you do as you like charge? As you initiate this this blood curdling 
Well, Rampy. I lift up my axe uh, from my back and I scream, "Time to!" I don't know. I don't have anything. I scream in rage. <laughs> time to! And I, time think to die. I think that's all you get out as you cover the last like ten feet to the creature, and the lizard just like roars up and opens its mouth, and there's like this um, quiet pop, and then your ears are ringing. You're on your back. Perhaps you've banged your head and there's just like a bit of blood coming out and roll for initiatives. Um, no, the, the creature is I wanna say the I wanted to say something for the dragon. Attack, um, attack a sham, so roll of initiatives. We don't speak um, to things, we just kill a sham, them. Sham you count has having acted in this turn. Okay. Uh, I also then count as enraged. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. That's good enough for me. Um uh, mechanically speaking, uh, you are prone. No problem. I'm in the skills section looking for initiative like an idiot. Don't mind me. Uh, where's an L for lizard? There we go. Boop. I'm dead already. Ah. Sorry, your lizard is dead. <laughs> yeah, we just killed us. And you said it's like the same size as a horse. Boop, yeah. Um, so, a sham. Uh, oh, I'm definitely in the back. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So I, need to I mean, I'd be in front of everyone else, but behind a sham. Uh, I don't want to be in front of Robin, trust me. Come on, tree. I know I want to be in front of Robin, but realistically, <laughs> I'm in front of everyone aside from you because you ran towards the thing. You tried oh. talking and it didn't work. Now I talk. <laughs> so it didn't, didn't work. It was... Robin. Waiting. Robo. Yeah, put things around. And I, uh, Sham is there. Okay. And I guess uh, I need to roll initiative for the lizard. Uh, Alright, lizard. Right behind the tree. Did, no, did no, Asham no. get pushed back then when he was... Uh, yes. Okay. Um, so well, I, I would have backed Ash him up, but obviously I'm not as fast because I don't have long yeah. strider. So, so I feel like I probably would. What everyone, them. what everyone that isn't a sham sees, you you see the the creature like roll back, open its mouth, and then the air in front of it just like billows, like um the same thing that kind of happened when uh, uh Carson cast uh, shatter happens. Like the air shakes, and then a sham is just lifted bodily off his feet slammed on the ground and there's all this kind of this popping sound in your ears a sham your like ears are ringing um so a sham your, your turn gets stolen away you by the cruel snatches of fate uh, robin what what do you do okay so let's have a little look here yeah let's go ahead um now i get to take the glory by charging the beast um before I stri before I strike it, I will use a bonus action to activate Raffle Smite. Um, so if I hit, this will trigger. But I'll just roll the attack first to see what happens. Okay, hoping that hit. Yeah, yeah, it does. Okay, so in that case, Raffle Raffle Smite does trigger, and this happens. So he takes an extra four psychic damage and must make a Wisdom save DC thirteen. Or be frightened of the scary halfling. Um, okay. so that's a total okay. um, no smiting involved? Otherwise? Uh, oh, no, yeah. I totally need to do divine smite as well. Can you do both? Yeah. 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 He activates the wrathful okay. smite before, and if it hits, it connects. And he activates divine smite afterwards. Yeah. So, yeah, Let, let's go full out and Paladins burn two self locks. Oh, it saves, damn. Uh, but then the other smite that comes in for another eight. 21, that is. 21, uh, plus the four psychic, so 25. Okay. Oh, yeah, that, that still counts. So, what does this look like? Um, this one's a bit spoopy, so I, again, uh, my, my rapier uh, unfortunately has lost its divine glow slightly, so I have to come in with my normal strike, and it just pierces into the beast, and then as, as I do that, there's like a small like shockwave that pulls my like rapier back out again, and there's like some energy like coming from the wound. 
So I think as you like plunge your 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 rapier in, there's the sound like squealing metal on metal as it like punches through the scales, and then <laughs> like this hideous like ghostly emanation comes out of the hole, and you see you see the creature's scales like darken visibly, and begin to like Ooh. crack. And it almost looks as though it's put on a hundred years of aging. It, it begins to like limp and becomes very sallow. You can tell you've you've dealt it a hideous blow. Carson, what <laughs> what do you do? Do I see this effect? Yeah, you, you oh. see uh, the rapier plunge in and then it come out and the lizard just begin like. Ugh. Oof! Oh God! What will I do? Um. This is a hard choice. You know what? I think I'll like walk out a bit, and my eyes will shimmer as for him. Probably, hopefully, another target appears. That's a long text. Yeah, that's basically uh, I. For he sees a different creature attacking him if he succeeds. Especially, he does not. So, what does he see? Uh, <laughs> what does he see? That's a hard choice. He probably, he probably sees me again, but with a giant sword. <laughs> yes. So you, you pull oh, out the giant sword and begin hacking at the uh, lizard as a phantasm, as your real self withdraws. Yeah, I go back in, into the tree. <laughs> yeah, that's all for me. Okay. It's a cool thing. So um, if that like fast doesn't actually hit, it takes 1d6 damage. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, Hello? Yeah, d6. Yeah. Yeah, you rolled the damage now already, anti. Yeah, but uh, that means if it hit, hits, because... I don't know It hit, the dc was 9, and you had... Yeah, 14. but like... Uh, the thing lasts, so... I don't know how we're supposed to do that. We ro point, you roll each round, each round you roll a d6. Okay. Roll a d6. Yeah. The point is basically to add another target frame to attack. Cool. So I, I think you, you see um, like um, purple lightning beginning to crackle off the lizard's skull and just like vibrate into the air as uh, Carson's magic takes an effect. And you see the, the lizard like pressing low to the ground and like sliding backwards and looking left to right, as though it's seeing more attackers than just Robin. Um, Obo, what do you do? This this great draconic hmm. lizard has been beaten down rather viciously. How beaten down does it look? It looks as though a smear pebble could kill it. Finish him! I, um, I show a log. My quarter stuff? Shalala, yeah. Shalala. Yes. Yes. And then. Oh, Shalala. <laughs> if you don't kill him, he's next, you know that. Yeah, yeah, I know. I am well aware. Um, Run up to it in a fury of anger and rage and erg. I'm, I'm mad. Um, <laughs> I then decidedly smack it in the face non lethally with the quarter stuff. Interesting. Go for it. <laughs> Not gonna work though. So you mm, slam your quarterstaff into its into its skull, and it just like skitters off off the side. Um, make a charisma saving throw. This is my worst stat. Oh boy. So, on, on the creature's turn, the lizard, like, presses itself down onto the ground, like, as low as possible, and just begins backing up. Um, as it backs up, it, like, nimbly avoids any attacks against it. And that's its entire turn. It just backs up, pressing itself to the ground. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, hmm. It uses the withdraw action. 
Okay. So, um, Sham, what you do? Don't kill it. Do yeah. not kill it. I charge up with my long strider up to here, heft a hand axe from my belt and throw that. Go for it. Mm. Um, it's gonna die. I'm going to torture it. Come on. Actually, what's the range on net? Huh? What's the range on a net? Is it, am I ranged for uh, netting? This thing? I think five probably foot probably toss a net or on it fifteen foot a disadvantage. But the gladiatorial net is not large enough to attract uh, this creature. Okay, it's, it's quite big. Uh, gladiatorial nets are like tying up human weapons and things like that. Okay, now then it's hand axe. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So <laughs> your axe embeds in its skull, and it just sinks to the, the ground, dead. Mm. And you begin smelling this strong musk just exuding as its blood begins to spill out. It smells like salt. As though you've stepped into a fish and chip shop and there's just this overpowering salt. Its blood spills out and it's this deep, dark blue that coats your axe and it just lies there, slumped. Its scales are all kind of sunken and dark brown, cracked, and it's it's dead. It's not moving. Yeah, not I over. get up and get my hand axe. Mm. Um, with the same amount of anger, rage, and gurness, I begin smacking it while it's dead. Okay. So every time you smack, um, <laughs> there's the sound of, like, rending metal. It's almost as like you're beating a gong. And uh, uh, this this dark blue blood just continues to like. I I try to out. restrain Obo and say, Robin, you have that fancy dagger from that hide guy in town. Maybe you can salvage a hide or two, uh, a scale or two. Might be useful. Yeah. Well, looking at how you described the scales, are, are they even worth salvaging? Um, I mean, do you want to examine them? Yeah, yeah. I'll have a look. They're they're anything. like they're dull and cracked, but as you like press on them. They feel quite sturdy and solid, almost like almost like sheets of metal. They're so strong. You can tell that they've tarnished somewhat, but they still have mm. their strength. Oh, you know what? And this creature, make camp this creature here. is definitely large enough to make a, a suit then, of something out of it. Yeah. Make, yeah, make while camp, you get everyone. To... I'm, and I pull out my little stag antler um, knife, uh, one for skinning, and get skin in the beast. But remember, leave the head intact. Shardy will uh, want something over his fireplace. <laughs> you can use your axe to do that then. Head. Yeah, I, I, I give Obo my great axe. You want to do the I honors? I have a scimitar. I have a scimitar. Yeah, but my so. great axe is bigger. <laughs> I guess. All right. So yeah, I begin to cut off its head. This time, leave the teeth in the mouth because Shardy is a bit of picky one. Uh, make a uh, strength check. Uh, oh well. <laughs> you can't lift my axe. <laughs> I can totally no, lift your axe. Can you oh. even lift? That would be I, so I have total strength, okay? Yeah, yeah you, you managed Jesus. to hack off its head with a, a couple well placed blows. Um, do you want to make a survival check, uh, Robin, as you skin the creature? Okay. Uh, do I get anything for having the, the dagger? The special uh, dagger? Roll a d4. Oh, okay. And the survival? Yep, roll the survival. Also, since we're camping here, and he takes himself all the time in the world, maybe advantage on that? <laughs> uh, no, 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 no advantage. Okay. So, like, as you begin, like, skinning this creature, it's it's not a, like, a thick hide of leather or, or a pelt of fur. It's individual scales, each as strong and sturdy as um, as like a, as a blade, essentially. And <laughs> you manage to like pry off its its skin, and as you do, the the scales just begin like falling apart. There's no cohesion between them, but you do manage to like get get scales which are you know still resilient individual to be to be useful. 
So, like, like, as I said, quite a lot of them have dulled and tarnished, but there are some still, like, especially on its underside and on its hind legs, where the, the scales are still kind of fresh and vibrant. And you pick them up and, like, ting them, and they literally, they sound like, they sound like metal. They make that ting kind of sound. Um, I think you've, you've got enough to make, like, make a suit of armor out of these, but you're certain that this would be a job for a blacksmith rather than a furrier. Okay. It'll be wink, wink, like nudge, making nudge. scale mail, perhaps. Can I inspect the scales as a dwarf metal affinitive? Is it metal? Um, it's, it's very similar to metal. I mean, it's okay. It's definitely got metal in the scales. Okay, but it's um, also combined with like this organic... Um, I don't know what lizard scales produced out of but it's, <laughs> it's also it's like okay. it's like metal latticed in with an organic material um how about the claws of that thing since he was such a painter are they in any way do they look like shawdy might um, like them they, they look quite chipped and broken like it's okay. been obsessively clawing into trees and as you as you okay. as you look down at his claws you look around here and you can see the claw marks are like literally from uh, the bottom of every trunk to maybe about 15 feet up on all the trees around this this little clearing. And does he have a cave somewhere on this clearing? Is um, there a cave? As you look around, you, you can clearly see like there's a depression between some of the rocks where he sleeps, and the only things there are like a couple of um, shells. No, it's like just uh, for shells. us to camp, maybe. Uh, yeah, the entire area, like, stinks now of this this strong briny scent uh, from Robin's uh, butchering. Can I can I investigate its inside to try and figure out what causes archaic effects with the scales? Um, what are you specifically looking for? Like I I, I want to know more about the creature. Like because when we attacked, it had some like nice no. fine fixes. Anything can is throw a stone. stone. thing. That's I'm proficient in throwing stones. <laughs> That's why we, we have you here. You don't need to throw the stone to hurt it. Just throw the stone to make sure that it's a real thing. Well, but no, don't do talk unless to it. You know, unless you, unless you know it's a group of wolves that come biting at you. If they already bite you, they're real also. <laughs> <laughs> you guys sound like you've been fooled one too many times. That can bite you. So they may not be real even then. Anyway, uh, throw, throw anyway, stone. stone. That's the rule. Okay, so, Carson, as you investigate this this big lizard, yeah. there's something about it. And Oboe, Oboe perhaps was the, the first one to have this niggling, niggling issue when he spoke to it in Draconic, but you can confirm that it is, in fact, a dragon. You look at its shoulders, and you can see an area where the center of a dense forest, there's just like a, a six foot good area at? where all the blocks uh, in the area have been dragged. That's that's this area. Yeah. There is um, a rule, guys. If you're on watch and anything approaches, you throw a, thro a, throw a stone at it first, because the pixies like to play with illusions, and we yeah. don't want to get woken up <laughs> every time. You seem to have been traumatized by pixies. Any throw a stone. stone. Thing. That's I'm proficient rule. in throwing stones. <laughs> That's why we, we have you here. You don't need to throw the stone to hurt it. Just throw the stone to make sure that it's a real thing. Well, but no, don't do. talk unless to you it. Know, unless you, unless you know it's a group of wolves that come biting at you. If they already bite you, they're real also. <laughs> <laughs> you guys sound like you've been fooled one too many times. That can bite you. So they may not be real even then. Anyway, well, throw, throw anyway, stone. stone. That's the rule. Okay, so, Carson, as you investigate this this big lizard, yeah. there's something about it. And Oboe, Oboe perhaps was the, the first one to have this niggling, niggling issue when he spoke to it in Draconic, but you can confirm that it is, in fact, a dragon. You look at its shoulders, and you can see an area where the bone structure and the muscles clearly indicate that at some point this creature had wings. But then yeah. just you can see like this zone where it's all like, oh look, it has wings, and then it's just nothing. There's like this matted knot 
of scar tissue and fractured bones where there's just shards. Um, make an arcana check, Carson. <laughs> okay. Yes, that's why we... this thing is a dragon. Yeah. It's clearly a dragon. But some powerful magic entity using magic has ripped its wings off. Uh, like you, you yeah. can see the clear signs of magical damage where where the scar tissue and the broken bones are. It's it's uh, unmistakable I... to a okay. trained warlock like yourself. I, I have good news and bad news. The good news being we can officially say that we've killed a dragon. The bad news is that there's some a powerful entity able to rip its wings off through mad magic here. Maybe it was well. a bigger dragon. Because this was quite a small dragon. It's, yeah. In fact, it's quite a weak dragon. Um, yes, not very strong. Quite disappointing. We rise with challenges. Dragons. Let's look out for the other thing. Oi. That mm. be, that'll be a worthy fight. One that will actually be, you know, yep. a But challenge. remember, a th throw a stone at it first, guys. Yeah, if you do see a dragon, make sure you throw a stone. Uh, hang on, <laughs> dragon, you say, and there's no... no uh, every dragon has a horde. Everyone knows that. Check, check, check on up some places. There must be a horde somewhere. So, I was so going looking to around, all you, all you see is the, the shells that, that obviously belong to the this dragon in life. The scarred trees are a testament to its crazed uh, scratchings. But this is the worst dragon ever. I, I start <laughs> digging in the hollow thing where it slept. I start digging. Okay. Um, you you begin digging and you find some like old scales that have been shed, but nothing further. I keep you, digging you through my entire first watch. <laughs> okay. So. Um, Roll a d hundred, a sham. <laughs> Shit! If we get ambushed now, it's my fault because I'm not paying any heed to watching okay. it. So, so, who's on second watch? Me, yeah, I guess. Okay, so oh. Obo. It's it's the middle of the night, and when you wake up, you see a sham, like six feet deep in a hole, <laughs> and perhaps. It didn't occur to him to take rope, or maybe just because he's a dwarf, but he, he seems quite a ways down. I can climb this. Are you okay there? Oh, is my watch over? You want to keep digging? Uh, sure. Uh, I'll reach my hand down. I'm, I'm small. Can I reach the hand? Yeah, you can reach the hand. Okay. You haven't dug that I, deep. I take it. But I lift him maybe... Up. There is no treasure this time. I figure I've dug down quite a bit. You know, you could Maybe. have searched the bone pit where the corpses are, where there might be a few stray gold or something. Yeah, but there is a dragon. You don't look for three pieces of gold lying here or there. You look for the horde. Yeah, but this is a small dragon. Everyone it was knows I... the dragons sleep on their horde. So it was just it... sensible to dig and look just to be on the look. safe side. Now take watch. I go sleep. <sighs> and if you find something, wake me first. <sighs> okay. Can I Don't search the bone pit the, through my watch? A stone first. Or just have oh. a quick, like, overview of yeah. the bone pit? Um, looking through the, the pit of bones where this, this tiny little dragon ate its, its last meal. <sighs> uh, there's, there's no gold. It's, it's purely beasts. That this creature has been being Fair enough. eating. It has had no flesh of man, and no incidental treasure lies nearby. All right, that's all I was wondering. Okay. Then I shall sit here and I shall watch. Okay. So, does anyone want to do a scene for inspiration over the, the this rest? Like, I can. This can be. Yep. Over. Go for it. As a level I one. I want to explain could. why I hate dragons. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. <laughs> You, you found uh, a bone right. dragon out in the, the forest. Seems unlikely. <laughs> Seems very unlikely. This is really weird. But it's not the first time it's happened. For Obo was abandoned in his um, very, very young age. Like, toddler. Very small baby. But um, he was picked up by, you know, a couple of hunters who just so happened to find him out in the forest. It was very mysterious. Obo didn't seem to come from anywhere. He just kind of appeared in the forest. He was taken care of by the hunters for the good part of ten years, taught out to hunt, taught the ways of the forest and such, before 
things started to get a little strange. You see, the hunters, they enjoyed hunting, you know, it's in their name, and they traded with the nearby farmers, and the farmers traded with the nearby cities, and this is how they got, you know, their money. But one day, the farms had begun just disappearing, in a sense, you know, like, you'd go there and there were burnt ashes of well, clouds of fire, just everything destroyed. The hunters weren't making any money. They weren't making very good hunting either, for the farm seemed to be... Well, no. Yeah. The, um, the animals seemed to be getting scared off by something. Not really sure what. They began to hunt as two, and Obo was left alone at the house. One day, an old man appears at the front of the house. He exclaims that his parents, without seeing them, are dead. Well, his adoptive parents. Obo doesn't know, doesn't care. Really just wants to go find these dead parents that they speak of. So he goes in search of them. Um, and after about two or three hours of random searching throughout the forest, screaming and crying, he finds a white rabbit. Just a normal white rabbit. And Obo, being one who just loves animals. Animals are amazing. I love animals. Uh, he pets the rabbit. But as he does, time passes immediately. And grass, trees, shrubbery seem to grow on his skin and his clothes. This is rather odd. Why am I growing trees, shrubbery, and jibba -dub? The old man appears. He says, you, you have the power of nature. The gods will give you this power as long as you serve them. Obo is very confused. Obo has no idea what gods are. He just, you know, he's a child. He lives in a forest. So, he goes on about his time. He's learning the ways of the druid with this old man. He's researching in this old man's very large library. But again, one day, after about five years of training in the ways of this druidity, there is a girl in the middle of the forest for no, you know, why is there a girl in the middle of the forest? What's going on here? The two meet, greet, talk for a little bit, and they find to like each other. And they decide to meet up again at the same place in about a day. They get there within a day's time. She's there. They do this for the better part of a year before Obo learns that this girl is a dragon. A shape-shifting dragon. How about that? That's really weird. And the dragon, you know, doing what dragons do, being evil and stuff, being green, kills the old man, enslaves over for about four years, makes them, you know, do things that... all sorts of fun stuff. And then, after a series of fortunate events, he escapes and he runs very, very, very far away, finding himself after maybe about a week of running and crying and other things, in Haven. Here we are. Okay, dokes. So, does anyone have a question for um, Kalel about yeah. this? Yeah, sure. Uh, what did Obo think about the old man? Huh? What was his relationship with the uh, old man? The old man was his mentor. He, uh, yeah. uh, like, the old man was a higher power druid. Or at least it seemed like it. Maybe he was a mage. They didn't really. He didn't really know. But he was teaching him the ways of nature and druidity and magic and all that kind of fun stuff. Yeah, but was this a, like a relationship of uh, respect or like? Uh, oh, very friendly, uh, but like mutually friendly. But the old man, outside of mentoring him, didn't really talk in a friendshipy kind of way. Just in a teaching kind of way, like a teacher. Okay, dips. Um, and I, I have a, a question just to, to expand upon that. Um, was the, the relationship with the old man like immediately after you, you realized that you had these powers, you turned to the old man, or was there like some resistance at first? Did the old man it have to win you over? The old man, you know, 
Ober was scared. He was like, whoa, dude, this is, this is weird, man. Why have I got all this grass and stuff on me? This is, this is really weird. And, you know, not being entirely in power of, in control of his own powers, he began to use them accidentally on things just around the forest. He even killed some animals he didn't want to kill. But after a while, he decided that, well, you know, I'm not going to sit around and just destroy things and use my powers for naught. I may as well learn how to use them correctly. And so he did. He sucked. He sucked. Uh, he seeked out the old man again, and the old man took him in. Okay. So, for that, Obo and Carson, both you inspiration. There's a very broad sweeping background there. Might have to expand on yes. some of those points uh, later on. But it, it certainly explains how you have knowledge of dragons. Yes. <laughs> and why you speak draconic. Sometimes. Yes, yes it does. Ah, <sighs> poor little baby dragon. I wanted to talk to the he dragon. Can, he can and go I wanted play to with the diabolos the now where he is. And then I wanted to torture the dragon. Poor, and I wanted poor to... baby dragon. But you got to Lost and alone heads. in the woods. Doesn't even have its wings. Who knows? Mm. Who knows? But anyway, um, so the morning comes round. And um, for the person on last watch, this change wasn't sudden. But perhaps for those of you waking up, it's a bit odd. The, the corpse of the woe betided dragon is completely gone. And all around the, the stones, there's this, this water. This salty water filling the air with this stench of brine. And it's just like lapping at the rocks. And perhaps some of you who slept on the ground are damp from this. Like you've got this salt water like seeped into your, your clothing. Uh, depending, I don't know if the person on last watch woke you up. A sham, the hole you da uh, the hole you dug is like it was like six feet uh, deep and quite broad. You can see like um, fish jumping about in in the hole. But the the sun rises and you you find yourself unmolested and <laughs> for the most part. <laughs> Wait, not so sure. Carson is in the camp. Ah, yeah, uh, you didn't kill my chicken, worry. so it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, guys, I think I might be a wizard. <laughs> uh, no. Yeah, that, I, I should be totally a wizard. Now it's full of water and fish. I've heard about this. I think I'm discovering my powers. But I think like, you are. the dragon's blood tastes like salt water. Um, like the, the snowball dragon blood, but yeah, the, the dragon's blood. Yeah, Very, like I, it, it I like... tasted. It tasted perhaps like um eating anchovies. Like Good. salted anchovies. Yeah. So maybe the dragon is surviving. So, Robin, you think I can make my axe glow like you can with your little pointy stick? No, oh, Ashim, don't you worry about that. <laughs> your powers will manifest when the time comes. Don't you worry. Ashim is quite proud of himself at this point. <laughs> <laughs> can uh, Can I look uh, around and or like? Turn stones to see if I find any like uh, arcane markings. Yeah, you, you spend what half an hour or so in the morning as as camps getting broken up. Yeah, there's there's no markings on any of the the stones or uh, the trees that's magical in, in nature. There's once again this this drawing, this scratched carving on all the trees of of a bottle, but. Um, no, okay. no arcane indicator. Carson, I didn't scribble anything on the stones. I dug a hole. That's how you do Is it. Is it by chance druidic? Uh, there's, there's no druidic here. No. Uh, can I dig up, like, take fish from the pond and uh, uh, kill it and store it as food? <laughs> Um, yeah, that yeah, yeah you, you, you take a couple of the fish, but you quickly realize they're too small to make any decent morsel, but, you know, they're flavorsome. Well, I keep them anyway, yes. Okay. Investigative material. Okay, dokes. Right. Pocket full of fish. I disapprove, but I'm going to be silent about it. With that, uh, Ashim, should we go and talk to the elves? Maybe they'll know if something about it. we can find them, and I can't actually talk to them. 
Well, I can. You know what I mean. Uh, We're going to point can. Them and then, I, can yeah, look, I can look bad at them if they ever... Wait, why is there some marking on the map there? Oh, don't worry about that. <laughs> DM doing secret stuff already? Uh, yeah, let's let's go and find the elves. Sure. Let's. We're, we're moving quickly again today, aren't we? If, if we can, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Keep your eyes out for elven stuff, I guess. <laughs> yeah, elven right. stuff. Long hair. Eat on to the fort. Same shit. Yeah. Okay. Okay. See you uh, powering out of uh, out the forest and heading north then. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the first thing in the morning uh, you notice is as you leave um, as you leave the, the forest, there are six fairly rotted uh, <laughs> spikes at the the forest edge, which have like skulls with barely any flesh on them, and they're just like stuck out there. Well, that's worrying. Are they human skulls? No, nah, I've Most heard definitely. this story in town of Haven. I know, it was, there's another adventuring group. Hmm. I know. They Ooh, took some revenge of some bandits. Did, did yeah, I'm carrying the dragon's head. Okay, uh, yeah. Um, as, yeah. As a point, uh, all the skin and internal, it's just all sloughed off. The whole thing like, is caked with um, crystal deposits of salt. And there's the bone underneath. Um, the skull itself is like, you know, the size of a, a horse skull. It's, it's quite beefy. Not a problem. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Does the skull seem arranged in a particularly arcane manner? Um, <laughs> no, it was placed here by another with adventuring your, with group. Your, the with bandits. your 23 and Arcana, um, you can probably see some... <laughs> Some hairline fractures and discoloration along the jaw, which seem to be uh, magical in nature. Um, some evidence of uh, magical damage. All right. Uh, you, you can't determine what it means. Yeah. Uh, Again, I, that's worrying. I, I look at uh, Robin and I'm like, another, another adventuring party. Do you? Is there a no, tail? Robin is talking about the spiked heads over there. Yeah. Is there a tale to tell? Well, I wasn't in the party, so no. But you know about the bandits. You killed some with me. These are just some of the same men. Did we spike them on spikes? No, it wasn't us. Like oh. I said, it was another group way before our time. Huh? Oh. The tale in the tavern has oh. it. They got ambushed oh, right. by the bandits and took revenge upon them. I'm tired. I just woke up. <laughs> Let's continue on. Okay. So Actually, I pick up one of the scuffs and keep them. <laughs> okay. Run um, beyond anything. So as, you, as you pick it up, the, the like spike crumbles apart and falls to the ground. Um, so move twice, roll a d100. Let's get this show on the road. Oh, what? What's this? That's okay. the oh. burnt down bandit camp. So you, you find yourself oh. standing in ashes. Like, this, this, all this is. Uh, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah, I put it on there. Map player, why would I do a C? Yeah. Ah. yeah, I'm not gonna the mess around world with the map is layer. Moving. <laughs> I'm not gonna mess around with the map layer on stream. Let's not <laughs> I'll do that later. Um but yeah, you, you arrive at uh the, the fort, it's it's charred embers and the burnt down remains of um these palisade walls. You can see like burnt skeleton and bones amid the, the pile. Um, Robin, you're, you're scouting, so I think you also see on the burnt timbers um, like some runes engraved and scratched into the uh, charred wood that have survived and you, you immediately can see the handiwork of the Fae. Oh, Christ. <laughs> Asham, look, we got the symbols again. Let's let's leg it. All right, I agree. To the north, to the north. Keep going north. Wait, 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 wait. Hello, Faye. Hello, Faye. <laughs> Fix this. Are you there? Let us not stay long. Are there any weird cat at snake things? Pointy ears. You see any of your elven mojo stuff around? Doesn't look like they stayed. Druidic? Probably yeah, well, not. But, uh, no. Uh, do you know, Delves with them pointy ears. Rumors has it the militia encountered yes. some around here. Okay, I do know elves. 
I don't know about the militia or them or whatever, but, but we're not about the militia. Just look around and see if you find anything the elves that might have been around oh. here. Oh, you want me to check for elves? Okay, yeah. Yes. Should I survival check? No, no. <laughs> Roll your like, check you, for elves. you can't see any elves. It's it's a pretty simple answer. <laughs> I check for elves. No, no elves. I, che I check I mean, for unless, anything unless, relating to elves. Unless a sham, at all. your dwarvish nature is a lie. Um, I don't think there are any elves out and about. Right. Okay. I don't. I, I no, maybe they didn't stay in a shitty place like this. <laughs> I am the I only elf here. We need to go northwest to. Uh, Okay. Yeah, let's continue. So Still double hex. speed. Um, move a hex. Uh, cool. And um, yeah, I think you you see it pretty immediately. Um, there's a stone tower uh, to the southwest, just rising out of the ground, with a well, flat. Oh. Top. It looks maybe two or three stories tall. Well, that wasn't Sir here guys? last time. Let's get sidetracked. Yeah, I'm Wait, very interested. Guys, we were here like two months ago when me and Robin first met and killed Carlos the Bandit Lord. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure there was no tower there. Well, you know what? Was there, Robin? There's a tower there now. Let's go find out what it's about. Maybe you just aren't looking that way. I don't know. Let's go and have a look at it anyway. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Uh, I can send out the uh, yeah, creature to... to yeah, no, we can, we, we can still reach it. We have yeah, movement. Yeah. We go to the tower. Uh, I guess you have to roll before you get there because we might be ambushed by something. <laughs> yeah. uh, roll a <laughs> roll another d hundred. Hi hi no low low. Uh -huh. <laughs> um. So I activate me... looking for trouble. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me check here. Um. Uh, do 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 do. Uh, be this document, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. Uh... Maybe we activated his trap card. You've activated my trap card! Aww. <laughs> his dragon is already dead. Okay. Well, you activated my trap card by activating your trap card! Oh, I hadn't considered that eventuality. Can I activate my counter trap card? <laughs> Level you five counter spell, your you're all out. You can counter trap card to trap card my trap card, but I will trap card your counter trap card to trap card my trap card. Oh, I hadn't considered that. Oh dear. <laughs> this will come an intense card game. The underbridge. The most intense of card games. Uh, Yugi Yu edition. Uh, da, 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 da. I choose Lubasaur. Uh. <laughs> all right. They're doing good here with the references. Yeah. yeah, now you've managed to scare off our only two viewers or something. <laughs> Are you referencing you, dear? Okay. So, mm -hmm. I think you, you walk up to the, the stone tower and you get reasonably close within maybe just outside bowshot distance and you can see that the the tower is a rough circle made out of cut stone, uh, and it's set in such a way that the land to the, to the west is quite, like, um, in sight to it. There are some hills behind it that naturally obscure it from the east, but you can see it's, like, looking out over a nice um, slope of the land which leads to the east. It's maybe two or three stories tall. It's hard to tell. You can't see any uh, windows looking out from it. There is a south-facing entrance, which looks to be a large um, door, like a big wooden door. Mm -hmm. And it has a flat top, no crenellations, just completely, like, flat. Mm -hmm. um, Warven Stone Cunning checking on the tower. To what information Can I throw a stone if... at the tower? Yes, good idea. Good rule, good rule. <laughs> uh, <laughs> do you, like, load one up in your sling and let it loose? Yeah. <laughs> Dink! It, it, it hits the tower. Oh, oh, Robin, uh, does the tower well done, look like the it's... Um, I, I cast a magic stone in the sling and then sling it. <laughs> Ding! It, it, it hits the tower again. 
<laughs> Robin, is what are the chances we missed this tower the last time we were in the fort? I mean, we were quite busy. Maybe mm. we You did. being let's, almost dead. You know, let's, go I, and have a look. Let's, let's, let's go and have a look. It's, we, there might be something interesting inside. Okay. Here we okay. go. Up so are tower. you uh, approaching stealthily? You just walking towards yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. Let's, let's, just door. let's just be polite. Yeah. Why always be like so There are no windows anyway. It's gonna be all sneaky, Snoo. Why don't we just knock on the door and yeah. say hi? So, How about brief... we send the level one in first? Yeah. A brief, a brief uh, interlude of maybe a minute or two of walking. You arrive at the uh, base of the the stone tower, and as I said, it's it's not particularly large. Maybe 60, 70 feet across in feet. Uh, maybe as I said, two or three stories, completely flat at the top. Big door. Um, you know. Seven feet tall, three feet wide, made of, of stone with like um, iron uh, bracing across it. Um, there is a knocker like on, on the, the tower door, which is like a snarling lion's head. And it's shut. Hmm. Do, do I know anything I, about I knock on the door? Lions? Yeah, knock on the door. So, yeah, say that again, I, I use the knock Carson. Uh, do I know anything about the snarling lion heads, like a um, picture of something? It's just an ornamental to... lion, my friend. <laughs> do you examine it before I think your, it your some companions brusquely knock, knock it? Yeah, I would like to examine it, yes. Okay. Um, it it seems fun. just to be an um, iron uh, knocker uh, cast with um, brass plating. Alright, you might uh, go ahead. Not magical. It might symbolize um, something to do with a noble house or some religious thing. Can I roll religion? No, it's uh, it's it's too nondescript. Don't need to so, everything. who knocks it? I, yes, I need to know everything. Okay, Asham, so, you step up and knock the knocker. Um, make a strength check. Oh, oh, I wanted to knock the knocker. Oh, you which case? Knock the knocker, uh, Obo, do you knock the knocker? Asham, do you knock the knocker? I knock the knocker. I want to knock the knocker. Knock he wants to, but I feel I protective of the level it? one. Are you sure? Oh, you want know, to it's only a knocker. I will knock the knocker. I will knock the knocker. Yeah, he knocks you the will knocker. not get to knock the knocker. Okay, over the <laughs> strength check. Right. That's enough of a strength check for me. Door is knocked. <laughs> you hear no response. <laughs> oh wait, no, I, I didn't actually need to do it because I actually knocked. No, no, that's that's fine. Yeah. Okay. No response. All right. So I, I guess we wait like a minute. A minute passes. Yeah, yeah. So there's no change. Wait. I I push out the door and see if it's open. It it swings open. It's very oh. like slow. The the hinges are quite stiff, and inside, you see a bare circular room with a spiraling staircase that ascends around the outside. It's dark. The only light comes in from the door which you're standing in. And you can see you can see evidence that this place has been lived in, but not recently. There's like scorch marks on the stone in the center. There's uh, smoke stains on the ceiling. You can see a couple like scraps of rotting food tossed in at a corner, and a bucket with unspeakable fluid in it. Um, it doesn't look like anyone's been here recently, judging by like the stench of of decaying biomatter. And as I say, it's just this seventy feet across circular room. Um, the ceiling's maybe about one and a half stories tall, and there's this spiraling staircase that goes up around the outside of the. Um, of the interior of the room, which ascends to uh, a door at the top. I uh, give a big call a okay, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shout in each language I know, which is five, common, dwarven, elven, druidic, and draconic. Hi, we don't want to be rude, but um, we don't want to like enter your house if someone's in there. If, if someone is there, could you please respond? <laughs> and I just continue doing it. You know, you know what? I catch on that and I add a abyssal and deep speech to that. I look at both <laughs> of them weirdly and go inside. Okay, okay, so, so inside. after, after the, the shouting in common, there's just a bunch of languages, which I some of oh. them, the rest of you, just don't understand. Like, Carson starts speaking, like, 
the serpent tongue of the dark space between time, and Obo is preaching with the language inherent to nature that can only be understood by the squirrels. <laughs> so, Asham, maybe you get that tingling like you want to cast Beast Talk, but um, you No, 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 this is way too stupid for Asham. Watch. He's inside. He's looking around. <laughs> yeah. Asham, there's another door up here up the stairs. Oh, yeah. Want me to knock first? We're already oh, in. I want to knock. Push it open. Okay. <laughs> I go up the stairs and look up the door there. Okay. So, as you near the door, it begins to thrum with energy. And you get about five feet from it, and you can clearly see visible, glowing, um, concentric blue circles overlapping with runes um, between them, hovering maybe an inch or so above the door. The entire thing vibrates with energy. The door itself. Would you say my beard is tingling? Your beard is like crackling with static electricity. Um, Robin... The door itself is a solid dark wood almost like this deep red and it has um like the plated hinges of looks like this silvery metal oh uh, robin i don't think i want to open this door asham step back a little bit i do so i throw a stone at him <laughs> so you throw the stone at it um <laughs> Oh, woe is me to describe the fate of this stone. It rests in the palm of your hand, the heat of your life energy, warming it as you wind it back for the throw. Time begins to slow and it sails through the air towards this magical barrier. It gets maybe about two inches away from it, and then there's just this loud sound. Like, if anyone's ever watched Tesla coils, it's that kind of... Bzz, an arc of lightning shoots from the sigils, and the stone cracks and explodes into a shower of dust. And as it does, the, the sigils, the thrumming energy, like, grows in intensity, and the steps just in front of the door begin to, like, crackle with static. And for a moment, it, it seems like it's going to surge down, and then it kind of subsides. Here, try this one, as I cast a magic stone on one of my pebbles and hand it to him. I quite like this rule. <laughs> Throw another stone at the, <laughs> the door. Okay, so... You throw the magical stone at the door. The same thing occurs with a slight difference. After the stone is destroyed, the effect lasts longer. Lightning crackles off the door and hits the, the ceiling, the walls, the floor. If anyone was standing next to the door within like 10 or 15 feet, they would have been like heavily injured by arcing lightning and it's you remember you're inside this dark space the only lights from the main door it's like like you're standing next to fireworks this this is like bright <laughs> shocking flashes of lightning but after you know another three four minutes it it quiets down it subsides uh, hmm. so question oh, Carl. You have a look at it, Carson. You're one yeah. of those mojo so it's guys. It's like magic shite. Uh, question, is, you know is the seal on, I... uh, on the, the stairs or the door? Um, above the door. You can see that the sigil is floating above the, the door, but right. it seems to be embedded not only in the door, but in the, the surrounding area, because you can see that the ar lightning's like arcing from the floor to the ceiling and from the walls around. Um, it seems like the focal point is the door, but the, the, the magic... To your, to your mind, messing with this door while inside the tower is probably a bad idea. Hmm, yeah, but... Gosh, I'm so curious. Oh. Um, Does anyone have a pickaxe? <laughs> Bit of a long shot, I know. Hmm. Never mind. I mean, I have a scimitar. Um, you know That's what? Work. I actually... Um, it's a tower, right? Mm -hmm. So I actually summon an invisible creature. Okay. Maybe so I mean, how long does this take? You do what now? I have no idea how long <laughs> that takes, but it's my pact of boon. Okay. So pact of an indeterminate thing. amount of time passes, and there's a small popping sound as the air displaces it on your shoulder, and you feel a heavy weight pressing down. Nobody can <laughs> see it, but you're all aware that an entity has been conjured into this world. Yeah, I'm so looking around the room. Uh, I say, uh, go out, go outside, fly up, and see if you can enter from above. 
Okay. And report back to me. And then I go outside. Um, make a... Hmm, what would it be? I think it would be an intelligence saving throw. Make an intelligence saving throw for the creature. Oh, I don't have his stats ready. Uh, uh, all right. In which case, just roll the d20 and I'll work it out for you. Don't worry about the rest. So, yeah. Uh, do that. Yes. Um, so it gets a plus zero to intelligence. So 19. Excellent. Okay, so uh, do you have any way of communicating with the creature while it's away from you? Telepathically or something like that? Uh, like, I have a vacant mind, but that's only 30 feet if I can see it. I don't have the invocation. That's, that's my okay. Topic. So I think um, it disappears. Like It's already invisible, but it like physically moves away from you. It flies up and onto the top of the, the tower. Um, and then you feel its weight on your shoulder about maybe 10 15 minutes later yes and it's 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 voice in your your ear yeah hello um so it says yes master there is a way into the tower on the top a trap door i entered in there were arcane sigils all in the room it is one massive thing it is filled with glass and shelves of glass do you think can you take how big is that glass I can bring it to you master do that okay make a, another d20 roll uh Carson what are you talking to he does that sometimes As okay, a point, is that please. telepathic uh, Carson um like, I need to see it to use a vacant mind, so it's not telepathic. Okay, so how long do you, do you wait? Um, like, how, how long did it take last time? 15 minutes? Yeah, I'll wait 15 minutes. Okay, so what are the rest of you doing while, while Carson's waiting? <laughs> oh, I'm just uh, throwing stones at things um, outside of the tower <laughs> now, just idly. And I'm saying, right, well, if there's a place to go in, we can, you know, climb the walls. It's not that hard. I've got a grappling hook and a rope. That'll work. Uh, but, I mean, do we really want to? <laughs> why not? Yeah, we really want to. Um, All right, then. Well, why are we even waiting? And I get my grapple hook and just throw it on top of, like, the tower. <laughs> okay. Uh, roll the D20. Um, Yeah, like you throw the, the grapple hook on the, the tower and it like hits, you tug on it, whoosh, it comes tumbling back down. The The problem is the top of the tower is just flat. There's no like crenellations, there's no there's no architecture for you to attach a grappling hook to. So you toss it onto the top of the tower after like a couple of throws to get it up there. And then it just like, it unerringly falls off just every time. Just goes, whoop, whoop, whoop. Were it feasible to climb the tower? I mean, depending on the stonework. Um, I mean, the stonework's pretty neat, but it's not like it's not like perfect. So there, there are footholds. You can see that this this tower's been around for a, for a long time. Um, mm -hmm. The the stonework's beginning to crumble slightly, but it's it's quite strong, quite sturdy. It'll be a difficult task to climb it without rope. But not no impossible. Problem. It's not a sheer surface. I, you got rope, Robin. I, well, it's attached to the grappling hook, but yes, I got rope. Yeah, good. Then I take the grappling hook and knock it around me once, so I have the rope with me, and then I try to climb up. Okay. Make an athletics check. Yeah. Oh, good one. Spider-Man okay. lives. It, it is easy for you, like. You, you're climbing up, and you're struggling to find a, a handhold about halfway up, and you just grab one of the stones, rip it free, and like <laughs> put your hand in there, pull yourself up, stick your boot in. Very quickly, in a matter of 
couple of minutes, you get onto the top, and it's it's perfectly flat. You can see this this whole thing's uh, circular, it's flat. Make a uh, perception test for me. Mm. Suitable to make this. Uh... Okay, there are deep gouges in the the top of the um, the the roof, and after a bit, you realize there's a circle cut maybe an inch or two deep into the the stone of the tower and you can see thinner lines around it's as though some sort of magical circle something of that nature um it doesn't seem to be emanating magic or anything like that and you can see maybe 10 20 feet from the edge a open trap door it's about human sized, made of uh, stout wood with an iron ring in it. I hmm. attach the grappling hook to the ring. I throw the rest of the rope down, uh, tell Robin to hold on, and I pull him up with the rope because that's faster. <laughs> okay. okay. What about me? Yeah, one after the other. Mm -hmm. one is the so, do you just pull everyone up one after the other? Yeah. Okay. Basically. Thank you. Humbling with with the, the rope securely affixed and a sham on top, it's a simple task to get you all up there. Uh, ten minutes of exertion the heaviest of and them? you all stand. Um, probably Carson. I'm not that heavy, I'm just You're not that heavy, off. but Robin's, Robin's a halfling and Oboe's an elf. You're the only human. Yeah, I look at him and say, no breakf uh, breakfast for you tomorrow, fatty. <laughs> you, no wonder your girlfriend dislikes you. <laughs> but <no. laughs> her nice face actually just went from like a but smile to like a frown. <laughs> Holy shit! I have you know, she is. She's. She's not my girlfriend for the hundredth time. Yeah, for a reason. For a Teddy, no breakfast. No breakfast for you. Look, there's interesting stuff down there. Don't worry yeah, about your girlfriend. Look at the magic there there it's not my goddamn girlfriend. And our relationship is very platonic. And she likes me very much. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've heard this tale before. Platonic and stuff, yeah. Maybe I'll yeah. show you how to do it with the ladies one day. Oh. No breakfast. Anyway, where's then. your little invisible friend? Sildi, uh, where are you? Mm. Okay. So, there's no response. I the trapdoor is play. still open very ominously. I resummon him. Okay. Right. Um, so, uh, I'm just going to check. There, There is no material component to casting your spell, is there? I don't think so. Because um, I feel so? like it might be the spell Find Familiar, which has a material component. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna check for my own sadistic pleasure. It has like pleasure. ten gold worth of material components. Yeah, but I don't know if the the warlock oh. ignores it or not. So I'm just gonna check, because um, he has packed the chain. Um, By the way, Robin, yeah, you learn the fine familiar spell and can cast it as a ritual. So yeah, it'll cost you ten gold to resummon it. Do you do you have ten gold? Also, it costs you ten gold to summon it in the first place. Uh, uh well, then I wasted all my gold. <laughs> yeah. So does twenty Good gold just disappear from your pouch, and suddenly you have no. incense? Oh, I actually have yeah. twenty gold. Yes, I resummon him. Okay. Yeah. So, um, give me an arcana check. Yes. Most most expensive spell ever. Okay. Um. So, as you summon, uh, your your familiar. It feels harder. I'm assuming you're, you're summoning the specific familiar that you've used. <laughs> like... <laughs> Not just another generic familiar, right? <laughs> yeah, here's the thing. I I sort of imagined the sort of imp being a species on uh, the other world that my god inhabits after entity. And I sort of enjoyed the idea of uh, he of just constantly killing those people <laughs> and resummoning them. So it's just a completely new one then. <laughs> yeah, it's a completely no new one, but it's the exact same species. Okay, so like it feels a bit difficult, 
and then you you focus and thump, there's a weight on your shoulder again. So the rest of you, you just see like the the fabric of Carson's shoulder deepen a bit. I'm like eighty percent sure familiars aren't invisible. His is. Imps are. Okay. Uh, they can be. Invisible. They don't have to be. Yeah. They don't have to be. I look yeah, around and especially but, at the uh, magic They have circle. invisibility. They can turn invisible until they attack or concentration ends. Yeah. Anything hmm. they carry is also invisible. Hmm. Pretty the hell uh... Or no, no, no. Actually, since I'm a wizard now, I try to poke where I sit, assume the weight on Carson's shoulder sits. Like. Okay. Um, what, what does your familiar do to. Carson, do you move? Yeah, yeah. Carson, I, I give you full control. Away? I give you full control. Yeah. Oh, oh. In which case? <laughs> in what which case? Shit. Um, Sham, you feel a wet, slimy sensation as you press your finger into the empty abyss on Carson's shoulder. <laughs> your nail begins to darken and fade from sight as this slimy coating appears across your hand and you feel something reaching up across your forearm and just it's almost as if you're poking something with a very long but as yet unseen tongue and then and this chill invisible. begins to emanate starting at your fingertips and just slowly worming back as though you've just plunged your hand into into jelly I, I try to slap it? it lightly like I'll let you move it back and forth. <laughs> um, there's a shuffling sound from the fabric on uh, Carson's uh, shoulder, and the sensation fades. I think I really am a wizard, Carson. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Congratulations. We can enjoy Congratulations, your Barbarian. You are officially a magic user. <laughs> yeah, now look around and do your magic stuff. I'm still learning my powers. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I got... Um, can I peek down to see yeah. you? I think Whatever. so. As as you're all like standing atop this tower, the, the plan is to enter. I think here's where we we take our next break. So you'll find out what's inside later. Um, so Thank God, I need to pee. Five ten. Uh -huh. Ciao ciao. And.